Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Norman S. Wright. The last couple of videos have covered specific product types, but there's still a lot of basics we haven't covered. So let's take a step back and cover how to read a psychometric chart in this week's video. So let's get started. I'm not even going to try to draw a psychometric chart. A psychometric chart looks like this. This is the psychometric chart for sea level. A psychometric chart will tell you everything you need to know about the air conditions. If you haven't read one before, there seems to be a lot going on. Looking at the different lines, you see dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature, saturation temperature, humidity ratio, relative humidity, and a couple other things. The cool thing about the chart is if you just know two of these properties, you can tell a whole lot about the state of the air that you're charting. So let's move this out of the way and break it down into its components. Let's start with the dry bulb temperature. The dry bulb temperature is the temperature we measure with a standard thermometer, technically called a dry thermometer. It's the temperature we talk about when we say it's 75 degrees outside. The dry bulb temperature is shown across the bottom and is represented by vertical lines like this. So 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, and so on. Let's move that out of the way and let's look at wet bulb temperature. The wet bulb temperature is associated with the water content of the air. The wet bulb temperature is measured with a wet bulb thermometer, which is wrapped in a wet cloth. As the water evaporates from the cloth, there's a cooling effect. This means that the wet bulb temperature is always lower than the dry bulb temperature, except at 100% humidity, where they're the same. The wet bulb temperatures across this curved line, and they go diagonally like this. Enthalpy. Enthalpy is the measure of heat energy in the air due to sensible and latent heat. Think of sensible heat as the temperature of the air and latent heat as the moisture in the air. Enthalpy is shown above the saturation temperature and run diagonally like this. Relative humidity. Relative humidity is the amount of water that air can hold at a certain temperature. Warm air can hold more water than cold air. Zero humidity is the dry bulb scale down here, and 100% humidity is the saturation line. The humidity lines are curved like this. Relative humidity is shown as a percentage, so 70% humidity means that the air contains 70% of the water that it can hold at that temperature. Okay, let's move this out of the way again and talk about absolute humidity, also known as the humidity ratio. It is the vapor content of air in pounds of water vapor per pounds of dry air, or on my chart, grains of water vapor per pounds of dry air, where 7,000 grains equals one pound. Think of it like this. If it's cold outside, you can have 90% relative humidity, but the actual amount of water in the air, the absolute humidity, is still low compared to when it's 70 degrees outside and 90% relative humidity, or even 50% relative humidity. It is shown on the right side of the chart and goes horizontal like this. Okay, next let's look at dew point temperature. This is the temperature at which water will begin to condense out of moist air. It's represented on the 100% humidity line. It's read horizontally on the chart like this. Next, let's look at specific volume. The specific volume of air is the volume that a certain weight of air occupies under specific conditions. Warm air is less dense than cold air, which is why it rises. Think how hard it is to heat up a room with a high ceiling. Specific volume is shown with diagonal lines like this. Last, let's look at vapor pressure. Vapor pressure relates to the number of water vapor molecules per cubic meter and is linearly related to absolute humidity. Vapor pressure affects the evaporation rate. When the humidity is high, the vapor pressure is high. This is why we have very little evaporation in humid climates. It's shown on the right side and goes horizontally like this. So let's bring all this back for a second so you can pause this if you need to look at it again. And now let's bring back our psychrometric chart and look at a couple points. Let's say you have a space at sea level and the dry bulb temperature is 70 degrees and the relative humidity is 50%. Let's find the other properties of the space. We'll put a 
point on our chart at 70 degrees and 50% humidity. Going over to the wet bulb scale gives us a wet bulb temperature of about 59 degrees. Drawing a line over to the absolute humidity gives us about 56 grains per pound. Continuing over gives us about 0.38 inches of mercury for the water vapor pressure. Drawing a line to the enthalpy scale gives us about 26 BTU per pound. And you can see that the specific volume is about 13.5 cubic feet per pound. Drawing a horizontal line to the saturation temperature gives us a dew point of just over 50 degrees. So look how much information we got just by knowing the temperature and relative humidity. How cool is that? So that's how to read a psychrometric chart. Thanks for watching today and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.